Train, 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 lava 16! The train, for its size, is the fastest vehicle on land. And the locomotives of Redcliffe Loco Yard are the power behind the stations, industries and train lines that make up the well-renowned Redcliffe and Guinea Bridge Railway. This is Redcliffe Railway Tales. After two visits to crew works within just four weeks, one for major repairs and the other for brake replacements, it seemed as though Ethan was finally properly fixed. Just before he was due to set off for home, one of crew's engineers was making the final adjustments to his new brakes. We reviewed your operational records when you arrived here, Ethan, and it seems you've had a bit of a history with faulty brakes, haven't you? I'd be lying if I denied that. If the Christmas before last, my brakes went full Thomas the Breakdown train and caught fire. Then of course I had that runaway only a few days ago, didn't I? Well, I can 99.9% .9 guarantee that you will never have another runaway experience. We've completely replaced your entire braking system. Your new one, developed and tested in Japan, has been proven to be the most powerful and reliable ever developed. From 80 miles an hour, you'll be able to bring a 200 ton train to a dead stop in just 8 seconds. Wow, now that is powerful. Congratulations, Ethan. You've won the Understatement of the Year award. So, shall we put them to the test? Oh, God. I don't like the sound of that. <laughs> That's what most of the engines who undergo this test say when I propose it to them. Don't worry, it's completely safe. Think of it as like the railway equivalent of a trust fall. All right, I guess I can trust you then. Delightful. Let us begin. Ethan's fire was lit, and as soon as he had steam up, he slowly chucked out of the works. Soon, he was lined up on a dead straight test track. Far off in the distance, he could see a line of coaches that would shortly be heading straight for him. Alright Ethan, here's how this test is going to work. The high railer will push the coaches up to its top speed, then immediately brake and release them. When these coaches hit 88 miles an hour, you're going to need to do some serious crap. Accelerate up to 80 miles an hour and let the coaches catch up to you. The moment they make contact with you, make an emergency application. If all goes well, you should come to a dead stop 8 seconds after application and without touching the buffers behind you. Is that all clear to you? I suppose. Rona and you all are. Excellent. Alright Matt, take her away. The coaches started down the test track, slowly at first. Ethan gulped as he saw them begin to close in on him, not helping his nervousness. They picked up speed more rapidly than he thought they would. They soon passed 70 miles an hour. Any second now, Ethan. The high railer released the coaches. Now! Ethan accelerated backwards as fast as his cylinders would allow. Seconds later, the coaches came racing past Ethan's starting point. He looked behind him and realised that he didn't have as much track behind him as he thought, but he refused to let this break his trust with the engineer. The coaches caught up with him, and as instructed, he immediately slammed his brakes into a full emergency application. To his surprise, he hardly had to fight the coaches he mentioned at all. Before he knew it, he brought them to a dead stop without even touching the buffers. Flawless results! Those brakes get an A plus from me as always! Thank you for trusting me, Ethan. Well, deep down, I knew I could. The Japanese truly are masters of technology. A couple of minutes later, Ethan and the coaches were back up at the starting point.
I suppose you have to go now? Yeah, I'd better. Everyone will be missing me back home, and I'll probably have my work cut out for me, helping Sir Callan keep Jack in check. Oh, yeah, Jack. I've heard many interesting things about that antisocial sod. All I can say to that is, good luck, Ethan. Cheers, mate. Hope to see you soon. Likewise. Bye. After shunting the coaches past the points that allowed access to the test track, they were switched to allow Ethan back into the depot. Once he turned around, he was beginning his journey back home when he was stopped by a depot worker. Ethan, could you do us a massive favour, please? I suppose. What is it? See that freight train over there? Yes. What about it? The Class 66 that was supposed to be taking it to Ipswich derailed when it was coming out of the yard because some incompetent blockhead left the catch point switched open. No other engines can come in or out. Could you please take it? I don't know, really. I've got to get back home. Oh, I quite understand. But if you did take it, you'd be of enormous help. Alright, if I'm literally the only engine available. I'll thank you, Ethan. I'll make sure your controller is notified of this. You have no idea how much you're helping this depot. Glad to be of service, I guess. Ethan immediately went to couple up to the train and set off for Ipswich. He was in for an incredibly long journey, and now wouldn't get home until the next day. Night had fallen by the time he arrived at Ipswich Freight Yard. He was just being uncoupled and was getting ready to settle down for the night when he thought he heard someone. Psst! You there? What? Me? Uh, who's there? Are you an engine of the Redcliffe and Guinea Bridge Railway? Yes, I'm proud of it. Oh, thank goodness. My name's Dora, and the crane behind me is Caitlin. We are trying to run away to your railway. Why? You see, I'm a class 90. I used to run express trains between London Liverpool Street and Norwich with 14 of my brothers and sisters. But our replacements, the class 745s, are being built in Switzerland as we speak. And I'm certain I'll be scrapped once they enter service. Me and Caitlin are sure to be safe on your railway. She was already slated to be scrapped, so I've taken her along with me. What on earth is stopping you? My pandagraph was damaged when we were passing through Stoke Tunnel. I've been shunted here, and I'm sure my controller will be very angry with me if I'm taken back to Norwich. He's sure to have me scrapped now, and there'll be absolutely no hope for him. Ethan couldn't help but wonder if Dora was somewhat overreacting, but could see that she was desperate, and Caitlin's life was actually at risk. And besides, getting a new engine to the railway might mean Jack could go home early. I'd be delighted to help you too. Ethan, you have no idea how many times I can say thank you to that. A steam engine rescuing a new electric engine from scrap. Ho the iron. Ethan's fireman worked fast. He switched Ethan onto Dora and Caitlin's siding and coupled him up. Right. To the hell out of here. And the hell out of there they got. But before they reached Stowe Market, they were stopped. Aha! Was informed you'd be coming. A greater angular class 90 and a crane too. You can't take these. Oh yeah? And who are you to tell me I can't? Do you have any humanity to us trains, or do you just consider us nothing but machines? Mere assets that keep the railway network running like clockwork, only to be disposed of the day we pass our expiry date. We are not insentient, mindless slaves. We have thoughts and feelings too. You are not going to put the cutter's torch on these two. I am taking them back to the Redcliffe and Guinea Bridge Railway, and you can't stop me. So onwards they went. 
did have a point about trains having thoughts and feelings. That was incredible, Ethan. I can only dream of being able to stand up to people like that. Me and the others would be more than willing to teach you that, and more. They didn't stop for almost the rest of the journey. The sun was starting to rise as they neared home. All was going well until they suddenly heard a rumbling noise above the hillside the railway lines of the RNGR ran along. My god, what the hell is that noise? No idea, but we should probably speed up. So they did. But this was futile in avoiding danger. A landslide came crashing down the hill. Rocks, mud and boulders landed on the tracks just a few hundred yards in front of them. Crap, we're never gonna stop the time for that. Oh yes we will, don't worry. Ethan slammed his new brakes into full emergency. It was very close, but they came to a stop just as Ethan's cow catcher touched the spoil. Wow, Ethan. How did you learn to stop that quickly? I'm afraid that's a trade secret, Dora. Ethan's fireman called Redcliffe, and Brian and Colin were sent up to clear away the spoil. I want Dora and Caitlin to be a surprise for the others, Brian. Are they still sleeping? They were when we set off, and hopefully should be when we get back. I hope so. Could you please hurry up with clearing that, Colin? I'll do my best, Ethan. The spoil was cleared in record time. With Ethan chained up to Colin, the cavalcade forged ahead for Redcliffe once more. The others were still dozing when they arrived, so they slowly and quietly slipped past them into the rolling stockyard. We're home, Dora. What shall I do with her, Brian? Leave her with me. I'll find a place for her. Thanks again so much for everything, Ethan. See you soon. Anytime. It was a pleasure to rescue you both. Ethan was uncoupled, and he set off round the loop back to the loco yard to join the others. This was the first chance Mr. Eric had had to speak with them for a couple of days, as the day before had been his day off. Morning, sir. How was Alton Towers? As incredible as ever, Jacob, we had an absolute blast yesterday. The kids absolutely adored Wicker Man. Did they finally get you on the Smiler this time? Nope. I've said it before and I'll say it again, Robert. Fourteen inversions is simply too many for me to handle at once. So as per usual, Francesca took them to X Sector to ride it, while I marathoned Galactica. Still the best ride in the park it is. Before they could talk roller coasters any more, they were interrupted by Ethan pulling in. Ah, Ethan, welcome back. Was hoping you'd join us. How do you feel? Exceptional, sir. But not just because I have new brakes. Ethan proceeded to tell everyone about Dora and Caitlin, how he'd brought them to the railway overnight and saved them from the landslide. Dora? Embarrassing name. Who'd want to be named after that stupid Hispanic seven-year-old who talks down to her audience in every single episode of her show? Max, the class 90s were built over a decade before Dora the Explorer first aired on TV. I'm very confident this name share is only a coincidence. Never mind that. You've done this railway a massive favour, Ethan. With Dora handling freight trains, that'll free up a lot of room for this railway's ever-increasing passenger traffic. These words echoed around Jack's smoke box. With Dora now on the railway, Mr. Eric was sure to send him back to his horrible home railway for his behaviour two days before. Sir Callum, please say something, or Mr. Eric could send me back to the Fort William in Inverness. No, he won't, Jack. Trust me. Excuse me, sir. If you'll allow me to change the subject, I'd like to tell you about something that happened with Jack yesterday. Sir Callum explained to Mr. Eric how telling him the story of Ethan's perseverance back in 2010 had given Jack the courage to explain why he'd acted so abrasive and self-righteous. 
So, Jack, you have been capable of change all this time. Yes, Mr. Eric, I have. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry for all of it. I won't ask you to forgive me because I don't deserve it, especially not for the crash I caused on my first visit. You may not feel like you deserve to be forgiven, but I do. Really? But, Mr. Eric, I killed one of your conductors. How can you forgive me for something like that? Because you seem remorseful, and forgiving the remorseful is the right thing to do. Besides, I doubt you meant to kill him. Um, well, thank you. And don't worry, you most definitely will not be going back to the Fort William and Inverness Railway. I'll buy you off your controller, then sell you to whichever railway first agrees to have you. As for Dora, she'll be repaired, converted to battery electric, and be in service by the start of this week. As will Caitlin. What followed was a chorus of whistles and honks so loud, the loudest of which coming from Ethan and Jack, Mr. Eric thought he almost went deaf. As per his word, Dora and Caitlin were in service the following week. Dora was given a siding next to Freddy and instantly became friends with him. With her assistance in handling the freight traffic and occasional passenger traffic, the railway was finally starting to cope with that year's summer rush. You'd probably think that as Jack was worried he might be sent back to Scotland because of Dora's arrival, he'd have taken a dislike to her, but they actually got on surprisingly well. Dora even helped him and Sir Callum over the Bexgate flyover with the picnic flyer in her first week. Unfortunately, I can't say the same for Colin and Caitlin. Yes, it would be a little while before they started to get along, but that's a story for another day.